Berlin, the People's Court, August 1944. The first resistance trials begin. Hitler orders them filmed and shown to troops and civilians as a warning. Technicians plead with the presiding judge, Roland Freisler, not to shout. They cannot record the sound properly. Freisler, ex-Bolshevik, admirer of Vyshinsky, is a rabid Nazi. The Gestapo has done everything to break the defendants. Once proud Field Marshal Erwin von Witzleben has his false teeth taken from him. Is not permitted to wear belt or suspender. <laughs> Karl Gerdler, who would have been head of state had the resistance succeeded. He was once mayor of Leipzig. Ulrich von Hasso, resistance foreign affairs advisor. Hitler had dismissed him as German ambassador to Italy. Adam von Tratzusotz, member of the intellectual Kreisau circle, once a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford. Count Schwerin von Schwanenfeld, liaison between the military and civilians in the resistance, former aide to Fitzleben. He dares to mention Nazi murders in Poland. General Erich Hepner, a brilliant tank commander sacked by Hitler after the battle for Moscow. The verdict is as expected, death for all. During subsequent trials in 1945, a bomb from an American plane scores a direct hit on the courtroom, killing Judge Freisler, destroying his records, and saving a few yet untried plotters. Volk, Führer und Reich, Sie werden mit dem Tode bestraft. Those sentenced are executed at Plotzensee Prison, Berlin. Daniel Shore. I want them to be hung up, said Hitler, like carcasses of meat. And so they were here in Berlin's Plotzensee prison. The first eight on August 8, 1944. Stripped to the waist, strangled in slow agony with piano wire, and then strung up on these meat hooks. And then there were more, many, many more, until the death roll numbered 5,000. Hitler ordered the executions filmed to be screened the same night for his private enjoyment. Sickened cameramen had to be constantly replaced until finally they refused to work altogether. Goebbels ordered the film shown to the troops as a warning, but they refused to look. This film cannot be shown today. What was the lesson of July 20th? Had the plotter succeeded in killing Hitler, the war in Europe might have been shortened by nine months. But the conspirators might have confronted civil war and the onrushing allies refusing to accept anything except unconditional surrender. At least, say some of the survivors, at least the division of Germany would have been averted. But even that is not sure. The failure of the plotters was brighter than their success might have been. And for the young generation of Germans, who make this their national shrine, it provides one twinge of pride to offset the memory of Dachau and Auschwitz. Because of these plotters, today's Germans learn that it is a virtue to disobey evil. Plotters whose names few now remember.